This is a regular Tuesday night judo workout. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday nights. And I've got a young man with me today that's been in the program probably the longest here on the mat. And um, started as a kid, stayed with it as an adult, as a college student now. And uh, I'm just going to ask him a few questions about mainly the kid program since this class is juvenile justice. So, um, how many years are we talking about now? Going on 12. 12 years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when you started, you were 14? Yeah, 14, going on 15. Okay. Yeah. And you know anything about what you were getting into when you showed up the first time? I really didn't. Uh, the guy that I described it, he was the guy I was on the bus with. He was like, yeah, come to judo. And I was like, oh, what's it like? And he said it was like jiu-jitsu. So dumb little kid I was. I saw UFC, and I was like, oh, let's go do that. And uh, came in and... Made sense. So was it like UFC? No, <laughs> nothing like UFC. All right, when you first first class, what'd you think? And why did you come back? Because we've had probably a hundred, a little over a hundred kids stick with the program over the years, mm -hmm. and but we probably had another two hundred that came in and watched and said, "That nah, we're not coming back." Uh, I stayed with it because I always loved martial arts, like growing up as a, little, a tiny, tiny kid, and I came in and got thrown around by you and everybody else and it just kind of awoke something in me, you know, I just wanted to learn more and wanted to learn and it gave me a safe, you know, uh, nice hobby to have as a kid instead of running around the streets getting in trouble with a bunch of other kids, so that's probably why I stayed with it the longest is that it was a nice hobby to have and it just turned into a lifestyle before. I did. Well, one of the things about the, the class that we ran and the, when we have kids come in, we tell them that you need to be here every week. You know, we can't miss weeks because each lesson builds on the next one. If they miss a couple, then they're going to hurt somebody else or hurt one of us or hurt themselves. So do um, you have any problem with that aspect of it? Just showing. I don't remember any issues. I remember you here all the time. Yeah, as a teenager, I don't think making a Sunday night is a problem. Uh, it shouldn't be at least, I mean, unless there's like some other third party thing going on, like you're sick, your mom's sick, or something like that, but being so close to the neighborhood that I was making it once a week was not a problem. I think I was even here more than that, really, just whenever I could be here, I was here. To get the grant, we had to sell the idea that we had an empathy piece, that we were building empathy with through somebody, you were taking care of them. Did that come off in the first class? Did that come off pretty quick? Uh, yeah, definitely. You, uh, but you, Crystal, Andy, all made that very apparent that you, know, you need to help your training partners out. If you hurt your training partners, you might have more training partners anymore. And, you know, through that, we build friendships and you know, more like families. And that that carries over to the outside world. You know, you teach kids, you teach troubled youth that you know helping people is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not, it doesn't make you a girl in the world or anything like that. And that it makes that it makes them a better person. Now, as an adult coming in here, last uh, I don't know, however many years, eight years or say, let's say eight years, um, seeing the kids come in and working out here and working out with us. Um, our commitment is six months. You know, try to try to hold in here for six months. Don't miss any classes. Stay with it six months, and then get off traditional probation. Traditional probation is usually a year, and so it's like we're going to be watching you. We're going to smell your breath when you come in, see if you've been smoking weed. You know, it, not because we're in your face, but because we're wrestling with you, so we're going to smell you. Yeah. You know, well, I've had a couple kids where I've had to say, you can't do this. You're high. You're high. But it's been relatively few. So what what have you seen with the kids that have come in? What, shall we say types of kids, or what, what's worked, what has yeah, uh, The probation program, I've always been a big fan of it, because you kind of see, you know, the typical troubled youth kid come in. You know, it's been hanging out with the wrong kids, thought something was a good idea, you know, in trouble, you know, the kind of kid that you know, I kind of wasn't as bad, I kind of walked in that a bit. So when the kids came in like that, I kind of saw myself in the and I was trying to help them out, and you were trying to help them out, Louie, everybody. So and you can kind of see them grow. Uh, you know, like they come in with an attitude, you know, 
next next week. Attitude be a little lower, but still attitude. But over the course of time, there's down to no attitude. They just had more work, and I think that that probably really helped us. Why you had such a, a low turnover rate when they were coming back in, and you know, kids kids learn that way. You know, people are being nice to them instead of yelling at them all the time, or being you know just thinking they're fun kids all the time. Instead, you were taking them in and helping them learn, helping them be better people at the same time. But we really didn't. I didn't focus on what they did. Yeah. I mean, I don't even remember bringing that up. I don't either. Like, I don't you know, remember. It's like, you know, the thing we bring up is keep your partner safe. Yeah. You know, that's drilled every week. And keep yourself safe. So, you don't really care what they did. Just so you show up every week. Yeah. <laughs> um, with the hundred kids we've had, just thinking about it this week, you know, when I was going to make this, um, we've had a couple, we've had a couple go to prison. Uh, we've had two in bad car wrecks. One ended up paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, the other kid, badly brain damaged, still learning how to walk and talk. I think he's been out of his wreck maybe three years, still struggling with that. We had one suicide with the kid uh, with bath salts, shot himself in the head. Uh, real bad habit with the bath salts issues and I don't think it was other drugs. I think it, in, from what I understand it was just really fast. But we're, Cody said troubled youth. I'm thinking kids with high risk behaviors or high risk environments or high risk socioeconomic systems. Um, you know, you're going to have that. So we, we've had good success but the ones that didn't make it they always kind of weigh on you when you walk in here on the mat because we worked out with them here. Yeah. And uh, worked out means not wearing silk pajamas and flying flags. Yeah. You know, it's uh, you sweat with them, um, you're rolling around, you're throwing, you're doing these techniques that sometimes people get hurt a little bit and you're just trying to make sure they don't get hurt a lot. So, at what age were you when you first competed? I think uh, it was about a year after, so about 15, 16, 15 and a half, 16. I remember, I still remember it was a good tournament last month. Where was the tournament at? Uh, it was in, I believe, Hillsboro or okay. somewhere near St. Louis. Okay. Maybe Festus, something like that. That's uh, probably 40, 45, 50 miles from here? Yeah. Okay. So we made a little trip to a tournament. Uh, family come watch? Uh, no, I actually rode up with you because uh, my family worked on the weekends. Okay. So I rode up with you in the juvenile van with a bunch of other kids. We've had and we've had a lot of tournaments where families will come in, yep. uh, parents will come watch. Your your uncle came and watched a couple tournaments, yep. and so that's always good. That's a nice tie-in. I always see the kids come back really more motivated after the parents have watched. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was when we start these classes. The first week, we need a parent in the room because they see things on TV, they don't know how the program works. So having to watch one class to know little Johnny's going to get thrown on his back is, is really important. After that, I, I don't care if they come or not, but we do have parents sit in, in the room and watch, watch judo happen. That's not a problem, uh, but I rarely see a parent. Uh, most time it's at first class, we get a parent in and we make the pitch and either they come back or they don't. So, uh, Cody is a Shodan first degree black belt. Um, gradually developed in tournaments and helping out the classes, um, knowing the techniques and uh, doing a Nage no Kata, which is the uh, ceremonial form in front of a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was a full tournament room with one lady there who teaches Naga no Kata, and I don't know what she is, seventh, eighth, Don Black Belt, scary as she could be. <laughs> Legendary Black Belt. Legendary, <laughs> scary woman. But uh, Cody got through that great, got his show done, and, and 
trains in other things now, works out in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and uh, hopefully studies hard to finish his degree. I definitely do that. So, uh, <laughs> the goal is, is the golden ring is one of you guys is going to, as soon as you finish your degree, get your master's so I can retire. <laughs> That's the idea. I go home and ice my knees. <laughs> so you need to take over this. But, well, I appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for the interview. Yeah.